Uh, bonsoir, hi everybody. Um, this month in Person of the Month uh, Chronicle, I'm going to talk about Victor Stiner. So Victor is one of the uh, French contributors to Python. Uh, so Victor uh, discovered Python 10 years ago and has been a contributor for four years. Uh, he started by fixing small bugs, like uh, many of us, and worked two years on fusing Python. I'm going to talk about that later. And for two years, he, fixed, he had fixed many bugs, then became a core developer uh, yep, four years ago. Uh, a few interesting projects of uh, Victor. Ashwar is a series of tools around binary files, or actually binary streams. Uh, at the core, there's a viewer and uh, an editor who can open a Matroska file, then inspect the video stream, and inside inspect the audio stream, for instance. Uh, you can edit part of these binary files. There's also a tool which is uh, Ashwar Metadata, uh, which can inspect the file and tell everything about the video codec, the duration, all that stuff. It's some libraries and high user, high level user tools. Uh, the second project is Fuzi. Uh, Fuzi is a library and a set of programs for fuzzing. The basic idea of fuzzing is, uh, I have my program, it works well with uh, well-behaved inputs. What if I just throw garbage at my program? Uh, if you have a C program working on text and you make it work with a, a file of a stream containing null bytes, maybe it's going to crash. So that's the kind of things uh, that are useful to do. Uh, don't think about like, invalid inputs just for trash at a program and you see how it behaves. Uh, Fuzzy is interesting because you can write a small script to do that, but Fuzzy gives you a clean environment. Like it will start your program with redirected standard output, uh, memory limitation, and so on. And it will try to detect if the program crashed uh, using um, system calls or the, um, the status code, um, high CPU load, and so on. Uh, it can also be interesting as an example of Python code because it uses a multi-agent uh, architecture uh, that can be an inspiration to write really big programs. Uh, Azar is a pseudo-random number generator lib. I think that's interesting because we have many uh, well-recognized uh, random and PRNG libraries, but uh, Victor is not satisfied with, uh, with them. And I think it's good to still have ambition to start these big projects and try to push them. Uh, the cool idea here is that you don't ask for a specific uh, library backend. You have profiles. Like, I want something fast. I want fast and secure. And Fuzzy is going to choose the right backend to give you your random number. And the last one is PySandbox. The basic idea is like you have an IRC channel. You want to allow people to run basic Python expressions, but you don't want it to access the file system of the machine running uh, the Python process. So you, you want to uh, limit opening files, uh, running infinite loops, and so on. And Python Box, uh, I think it's three or four years old. And recently, uh, Victor sent a mail to say the project has failed. That's really interesting, because after years of trying uh, to make it work, uh, it's good to acknowledge that, OK, it failed for these reasons. And we have learned these lessons. And maybe we can go in these directions to make it work. And that's uh, kind of like in the scientific uh, milieu, why you don't always have success, but you also need to document your failures. Uh, so the PEPs, that's Python Enhancement Proposals. Uh, Victor has, uh, has been offered to a uh, recent accepted PEPs. Uh, in Python 3.3, we got new time functions, because sometimes you want to know the exact, for instance, the exact time something runs, but you can trust the system clock, because it can be adjusted, it can change, you can have leap seconds, you can go back. So we need a function to have a monotonic time, which is always going to um, increase in monotonic uh, fashion. This was a, a really long discussion uh, to provide the best functions to Python users. Uh, three of them are coming Python 3.4, uh, a way to customize memory location, uh, a really complicated security fix for uh, file descriptors inheritance when you have sub-processes and forks and a new module to trace uh, how memory is allocated for Python objects so that you can find which objects uh, are using too much memory and maybe change them. Um, I asked uh, Victor about the pub process, because uh, sometimes you start with an ID, you post on Python ideas or Python dev, and you get a lot of pushback. And according to him, uh, pub process can be really exhausting. It's really hard to achieve a consensus. It can take years, and the end result may be really different from the 
a basic ID, but it's worth it because that's an important part of Python that we don't see. We see the language, we see the community, but sometimes we don't see the process. And according to Victor, it's really good to have uh, this process in place. Everybody can propose, but you have to get the consensus. The last pep was rejected, it was deferred, and other peps was rejected, but uh, it was for the best. A uh, few questions and answers, I only have one minute left. Uh, I asked him what's the, the thing you, you love the most about Python, and it's me, he's still uh, amazed that the same language can be used for teaching and to build real big applications, uh, something I agree with. Uh, but the worst thing for him is that it's really hard to remove something obsolete. Uh, you can see it with the pep I put as example. We have uh, duplicated functions or old ways of doing things, and it's really hard to deprecate and remove it because of backward compatibility. Also, the packaging situation, the comments. Uh, the worst thing in the community for him is that we have a few trolls and can really take energy and time from all people involved. But the best thing of the community is that most people are welcoming, well-meaning, and still work to improve the language. I'm going to leave you with a few quotes. Uh, you can read them in French for the English speaking. Um, Python is a summary of the best practices and the good tools of all existing languages. There's nothing re re revolutionary in Python. And you could view that as a weak point or as a good point. And um, second one, the strength of Python is when you manage to uh, build complex things uh, by elegantly combining simple uh, bricks. Uh, I leave you with his uh, long-term vision for Python. According to him, Python is going to replace all interpreted languages, and that's a fact. <laughs> Thank you.